And before we move to our public hearings for this evening, we have three of those scheduled. Um, we have uh, minutes to take care of from our January 11th meeting. Uh, in the interest of time, I will move approval of those minutes as distributed. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor of the minutes uh, as distributed, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Our minutes from January the 11th are approved and we can move right now into our public hearings for this evening. Uh, we only have three hearings this evening. It doesn't look like a large um, group participating, but let me just run through our ground rules for this. As each public hearing is announced by one of the staff members, we will invite the applicant or their representative to provide a brief summary of the application, then following any questions by the commission members for clarification. Uh, we will invite members of the public attending, attending the meeting to speak either for or against. In the past, when we met in person, we would ask those speaking in favor to speak first, and then those who wish to speak against to speak second. In the interest of time, we will ask <clears throat> Heather to run through the list of those um, participating electronically in the meeting, and whether you're for or against the application at hand, uh, please offer your comments when um, she reaches you on that list. And uh, where there are comments made in opposition, we will invite the applicant to return to address those comments made in opposition. So with that, I think I've covered it. Uh, Heather, would you please get us started with our first public hearing? Yes, certainly. Good evening, Commission members and Mr. Kulik. The first public hearing this evening is SP2101. This is a special permit for a restaurant at 1001 East Fayette Street. T. Andrew Dvorsitz is the owner and Josh Davis is the applicant. And the property lies within a business class A zoning district. Okay, thank you. If the applicant is here to present, please uh, begin. Hi, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Oh, great. Okay, um, again, oh, sorry, a little close. I'm using my uh, phone here because my laptop camera wasn't doing very well. Um, so anyways, thank you guys all for, um, you know, getting us, getting this meeting involved and allowing me to come to present my cafe to you all. So we are Luna Cafe. Uh, the business owner is, all, or I'm sorry, the building owner is also here. So if anything um, comes up that I'm not sure how to answer, um, please, he's there to help me as well. I, as you guys can tell, this is my first business and cafe. So I'm not really great with words, a little nervous. So I apologize if I stumble a little bit. Um, Excuse me, Josh, could you, could you please introduce yourself and your address? Yes, this is uh, Josh Davis, uh, Luna Cafe. Uh, I'm going to be open. Uh, I'm looking to open at 1001 East Fayette. Uh, it's the corner lot, so I'd have both um, 1001 East Fayette and the Corral section. So I got the full corner there. Uh, do you need my home address, or were you talking about the uh, cafe? I'll defer to uh, Catherine Ryan on with that answer. Um, you can provide your home address or a business address. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll do uh, the 1001 East Fayette Street since uh, just to keep it all in line with uh, the application there. Great, so just uh, proceed and give us an overview of what this application entails at, at that site. Okay, uh, so basically we'll be opening up uh, Luna Cafe, which is a cat cafe. Um, basically how it works is we have one area which is a small restaurant style cafe we're serving coffee tea baked goods stuff like that uh when you walk in it's it's designed to look like you walked right in japan because that's where i've gotten all my inspiration from as i've i just love tokyo and i love japan so it's colored in the themes of a japanese story it's very authentic now in a completely separated space is the cat lounge uh the cat lounge is where you will be able to go in relax with cats read a book uh, go on your laptop, have study groups with your other uh, students. If you have a meeting you need to do, you can do that as well. 
Uh, these are both completely separate spaces so that you'll never have any interaction between the two. Uh, and then we'll have what we call a cat handler uh, on one side to always be there watching to make sure the cats are okay and the, and the people come in and uh, in an orderly fashion. Um, how that works as well is we're going to be working with the CNY Cat Coalition. Uh, they're going to be providing the cats and we are going to be working to adopt them out. So as we get, uh, as we have customers coming in, you know, they're on their laptop, they're doing their homework, they fell in love with this 11 year old three legged cat, uh, finally got some exposure. Uh, we're going to then get them over to CNY Cat Coalition, who will fully vet them. If they get, um, if they love the cat and they love the person, we'll get them together, we'll get them adopted out, and then we'll get another cat in there. So it's kind of a dual approach of both uh, giving back to the, the community in the sense that getting these cats homes, as well as having yummy food that people haven't experienced before, uh, such as uh, pineapple upside down, cake pie, s'mores pie, and different things like that. We have a, a lot of strange uh, concoctions we've come up with. Um, pretty much everything will be um, run by me uh, and the, the owner, the, the cook and everything as well. But we'll, we'll have a small staff. Uh, it won't be too crazy. It's a small actual cafe. I mean, there can only be like maybe 25 people in the, the cafe seating area. And we'll have our you know servers and we'll also have the uh, server assist who will make sure that you know everything's uh, okay within the restaurant. Once that's taken care of, let's say someone wants to see the cats, then they will uh, let the server assist know who will coordinate with the cat handler, making sure everything is done by the book in an orderly fashion. Um, the only entrance we're going to have is on the 1001 East Fayette Street. Even though we have the corner there, uh, we're going to focus one entrance. Now, we have emergency exits, of course, and we, if safety is top priority. Uh, you can get in the other side, but uh, that's the crowd side. You know, We don't even need to worry about that because nobody's coming through that door because if they open that door, Cats galore. <laughs> uh, so we we want to make sure we keep everyone coming through 1001 Fayette. That's why we got the big welcome sign there. Um, I've been pretty much uh, working my working everything off, trying to get that thing ready. And it's pretty much, you know, the decor and everything's done. Um, yeah, I've been doing everything myself. So, again, I apologize. Uh, I maybe answered some of your questions, but I'm really not sure how to do this. This is my first time opening a business. So I'm just trying to bring something amazing to Syracuse. And I've been here for a long time. I think having this authentic Japanese cat cafe where people can bring their families. I'm a huge fan of Glazed and Confused, and that is like where I tell people who, when they come in to visit, I want people to be like, oh, let's go to Cat Cat, let's go to Luna Cafe. And uh, it's just a place that there's no booze, there's no alcohol. It's just a place to have a good time and bring families in and relax, but not be like the bar scene or anything like that. It's where students can come down from the hill. There's going to be student discounts, Uber discounts, everything just to get them in to be able to relax and have a good place to get away from their dorms, have people get away from the office. And of course, we're going to be doing COVID precautions as well, but I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to get into that. But uh, everything is, uh, yeah. So I apologize if that was a lot. Um, if I didn't answer enough, please feel free to correct me or let me know. Um, yes, Josh, this is Heather Lamadola, the only administrator. I did have... Um, I just need to clarify some things because when we were at the pre-development meeting, um, I had, we had to make sure that the cafe was integral and part of the other space or else it would not be allowed. But you just said it'd be apart and separate and distinct and wouldn't, you can't go in one without the other. So can you please make sure <laughs> that these are integrated and not separate spaces? Yeah, they are fully integrated. I just meant that we would be controlling to make sure cats don't come into the restaurant all the time. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I meant by like the separate, because I don't want people to be like, oh, because when I tell people about cat cafes who've never done it before, they're like, oh, I'm going to get cat fur on my burger or my, my cake. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> we're going to make sure that's okay. So it, it is integrated. I just wanted to make you guys aware that I wasn't going to have like cats running all over the place while people are trying to have pie. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It's just that because we don't have an enumerated use for just assembly, it couldn't, you can't just have people hanging out on their computers with cats. But if it's integrated as part of the, the actual restaurant, then that's totally fine. So I just want to make sure and clarify. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, I'm done. <laughs> Any additional questions for the applicant? Uh, yes, could we talk about the waivers, the parking waiver? 
Yes. Um, so I, I submitted that to ask if that can be done. Uh, basically, we're in a really cool, uh, well, there's a couple things that are great about this. And we talked about this in the uh, pre-development meeting, which, again, thank you guys for doing that. So that, again, everything has been teaching me stuff. Um, so the cool part about 1001 East Fayette is there is lots and lots of on-street parking. But in addition to that, that's not enough. I want to do more. So we, well, we also have two separate bus stops right in front of the cafe here and over here, like literally right across from each other. Um, also, I'm going to be doing um, Uber discounts, 10% uh, for anybody that takes an Uber to the cafe, specifically for two reasons. One, there are people that want, will want to come there and they may be out of their, you know, may be out of their reach. So it's, they don't have a car or something along those lines, but they want to come there. And I, I've been there before. It's like, oh, let's go to that restaurant. Oh man, I have to take an Uber there. If they can save a little bit, that'll help. Then it'll also reduce congestion. And I want more, more and more people to take Uber and Lyft. Uh, it's a great service. Keeps people, keeps, you know, a lot less traffic on the road. Uh, in addition to that, uh, based on one of your guys' suggestions in the pre-development meeting, which I took very seriously about adding bike racks, um, I asked the building owner, totally fine with that. He loves the idea. I want to do that as well. Being that, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the area, but uh, the university is right like here and the, the cafe is here. So biking, I mean, I know Syracuse has been huge on biking with all the bike lanes we've been adding and all the progression with the Erie Boulevard situation, which is amazing. So bike racks are going to be huge too. So I'm going to have uh, people be able to park their bikes there. And then of course, um, there's also paid for lots in the area all around. And one of the cool, I think it's cool, employee perks that I want to do is purchase parking for the employees and some of the other paid lots as well. Um, again, we're not gonna have a, ma a massive staff because it's a very small cafe. We won't even have that many people in there at, at, at the same time. But uh, we have all those different uh, options to make sure that you know it's not clustered or anything like that, so. Okay. And then the other question was about the uh, waiver of curbing requirement that there, there's a, uh... The, the, I'm sure the staff talked to you about the setback, I guess, the uh, distance. Yeah, yeah. So I had a, a, a couple of thoughts on that. So one of the things that they may not have been, um, there may have been some confusion, I'm not sure. So, and you guys have all the site plans and everything. So basically, because the everyone's going to be going in to uh, 1001 East Fayette, there is eight feet of sidewalk on that side. They were concerned on the Krause side, I believe, there being a, uh, not eight feet because they put, they beautified the neighborhood and added some grass, which they've been doing all around Fayette Street is this whole grass like setup where, you know, you can add trees or benches and stuff like that. So they're really beautifying Fayette, East Fayette Street. And I love that. Um, I would love to be able to keep that as opposed to just concreting it up. So I think it's really beautiful. Um, it has potential. Uh, but again, the 1001 Fayette Street is the eight feet. It goes all the way down basically. Um, all, you know, all the way up, way all the way up East Fayette Street and all the way down the other way. And that actually is where all the customers are going to be going in. So I, I was wondering after, you know, I've submitted everything, I was wondering, I was like, maybe they think people are coming in the Krause side, which is never going to be the case because that's where the cats are. They're going to be coming in the 1001 East Fayette, which is off that large area. Um, and then they mentioned that based on it being, I, I can't actually do a couple of the things like the building itself it's it's housed businesses for i believe 70 or 80 years multiple multiple businesses in the commercial area um but it's it's, it's a very old building so obviously i wouldn't be able to move it they mentioned something about the building um i'm sorry i apologize something about um setbacks or something but uh so i just put a overall waiver based on them mentioning that that I might have to uh, review the sidewalks or the building itself. But other than that, the, the building has been there for a very long time. It's housed multiple commercial real estate. Nothing's there now because the building owner, he was able to beautify it. Um, but yeah, I, I, did that answer the question at all? Or did, I'm sorry, I kind of fumbled with my words a little that's, bit. That's okay. I, I think we've covered it. Thanks. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So additional questions, either from the staff or from the commission members? No. no. In that case, then, let's see if there's anyone who would like to speak in, for, in favor of or in opposition to the application. Can you kind of take us around the screen, uh, Heather? And, and people have to unmute themselves. Is that correct? That's right. I cannot unmute you. So. Um, I am going to go down the list. I do know that there are other applicants here, but just to be fair, I want to call on everyone in case you might have 
uh, an opinion on any other hearings one way or the other. So I'm going to start with Bernie McDonald. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we have a call in user two. I, um, so someone that's on the phone, if you would like to speak, I think it's, what is it, Catherine? Star what? Star six to unmute. Star six will unmute you if you're only on the phone. Okay. I do know that Andy, uh, the building owner, said he called in. Sorry to interrupt. So I, I'm not sure if okay. maybe he's trying to do that, if that's him or not. But I know he called in. He told me. Okay. Well, I see a T, Andrew Dvorset. Oh, but okay. this Sorry. person is just identifying as call-in user two. So sometimes when you're on your phone, your name doesn't come up. So, um, okay. Well, we will keep going. And if that person can, it wants to unmute, we'll, we'll listen for them. Uh, Charlene McDonald. Sounds great to me. <laughs> uh, Darlene McDonald. No issue. Um, uh, PLLC. No comments. All right. And Andrew owns the building. And Terry, Terry Luckett. I'm here for another application. All right. Thank you. That is everyone on the list. Okay. So we have no. Um, comments. Everyone who wanted to comment on the application has had the chance to do that. And I think we are in a position to now close this public hearing. So we will do that. And before moving on to our next public hearing, we'll pause for a few moments and see if there is a, a motion uh, from one of the commission members for action on this application um, either way. Move approval with a negative declaration granting the waivers uh, for parking and for the curb treatment. Okay, thank you. I second. Thank you for that. Excuse me for interrupting, but just for the record, there were additional uh, deviations from the zoning ordinance uh, other than just parking and on site curbing requirements. Uh, and they're listed in your um, staff report. Um, I believe there was the street line, sidewalk with arterial setback, lot size, and lot width. That is correct. All right. And I heard the uh, the applicant did say. Obviously, the condition of the building, the location of the building uh, beyond the control of the owner, the owner agreed to some beautification. So I didn't expand the, the waivers to include all of those, including the zoning. Uh, the deviations listed in the staff report. And I will second that change. Thank you, Jeffrey. Okay, thank you both for that adjustment. Any discussion on the motion? If not, then all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that motion is approved and we will move to our next public hearing. Uh, Josh, thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome to stay. Um, and we're just going to move on to continue with our other business. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there anything else I need to do? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so new. I don't mean to uh, delay you at all. Or uh, does there, should I just stand by or how's, is that how that works? Or. <laughs> Um, so, Josh, this needs to be uh, now referred to the Common Council for their consent. So what we do as staff is we write up the resolution and based on the any conditions or decisions that the commission has made here tonight, then we have the chairperson sign the resolution and then we forward that to the Common Council and they uh, schedule it for their next available agenda and then you do not need to come to that. You are certainly welcome to, but it's, um, I present on behalf of the planning commission at that point. Oh, well, again, thank you guys so much for the time. And again, I apologize. I was kind of bumbling. <laughs> no problem. You're welcome to stay, as we said. Uh, so you've got approval at this level, but there is a process and another 
step involved, and that will happen in the in the weeks ahead. Thank you again. Uh, have a good one, guys. All right. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to our next hearing. All right, so this next public hearing is SP 2102. This is a special permit for a restaurant at 1011-1013 Street. Salat Muse is the owner and applicant, and the property lies within a business class A zoning district. Okay, if someone is here uh, as the applicant or representing the applicant, can you please give us a summary of the uh, proposal that's involved here? Hi, my name is William Pitcher of Pitcher Architect, and I'm representing the applicant. Um, can I uh, grab the screen? Can I share it? My desktop? Yes, you may. Okay. Just a second here. Okay, uh, the application is for a special permit. It's a fast food takeout. Uh, it's a Victorian house. It uh, previously has had a special permit for a bar and then it was converted back to three apartments. And now the applicant is proposing to take one of the front apartments, convert that to a hot food takeout. So that we're looking for a special permit. Um, a lot of the waivers that we're asking for are due mainly to the existing building and the fact that uh, a lot of those requirements are appropriate for new construction with a sit down restaurant where customers are spending an hour or so uh, parked uh, while they're being served. And the fast food takeout, we're looking mainly at pedestrian traffic uh, from the neighborhood and probably no more than five minutes inside the uh, building uh, while they're getting their orders. Um, we are in a class B zone uh, on both sides of us. However, there is a residential zone behind it. What we're asking for is conversion of the driveway, the existing driveway to a non-vehicle alley with a new fence, uh, putting in new pavers and sidewalk in the front and new wall signage. Okay. Uh, the existing zoning, um, I pretty much went over that. Our off-street parking, we require waivers. We ran into a problem with a building code <clears throat> requiring three-foot wide access way and the fact that you can't park a car and maintain the building code requirements. That was noted by DPW. So that's the reason for a waiver of no parking spaces on site and the conversion of the alley uh, so that uh, we can uh, control the vehicles. But that would also deal with removing the apron between the sidewalk and the curb and removing the curb cut and placing a fence across the alley. Um, now, uh, this is the neighborhood. Uh, this is the subject property right here. Um, so you can see it's a very tight thing. The neighborhood is pretty much residential on the opposite side of the street. This is the rear parking lot. This is the neighboring building to the left of the building. You can see that there's a parking lot for that apartment house and there's an apartment house there. This tree right here is on the subject property uh, here. That's an old garage. And Basically, the tree is here. There isn't enough room back here uh, to put in two parking spaces and to still turn around and come out. So it's not a working parking thing. We're proposing to have new pavement in here, uh, new planters, and basically this would remain yard. Uh, we have a new metal fence and a new wood fence, and then the makeup air for the kitchen hood. This is the renovation. The front apartment here will be the commercial area. The store area is just this small amount of area in front of the counter, and uh, that's the food prep area and equipment. There are no changes to the second floor apartment. Uh, the 
rear apartment on the first floor, there are no changes proposed to that. Uh, this is the paving we're, we're talking about putting in some planting beds to the edge of the right of way with some low junipers, uh, putting a new sidewalk here. Presently, this is all asphalt uh, between the sidewalk and the building. Uh, putting down some uh, yellow or red brick uh, concrete pavers and then tearing up the asphalt, taking out the curb cut, putting in the fence and a, a wood screening fence here in addition to the metal. And um, so those are the waivers that we're asking for. And um, I will return this to you. That's pretty much my presentation. If I can get rid of it. Um, <laughs> how do I unshare? Okay, so if you scroll up to the top, top, some menu will uh, magically come down and say stop sharing. Share content. Stop sharing. There we go. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I just want to let the commission know that. Um, so they're not. You're not going to you cannot act on this tonight because the the two spaces that are necessary for the residential uses. Um, can by the commission. So the applicant is seeking a variance through the Board of Zoning Appeals. And what we would do is through special permits, you can, um, you know, they can apply directly to the Board of Zoning Appeals. We would take any comments that you might have about the site, the proposal, and the waivers that are necessary to the Board of Zoning Appeals. So um, they will be scheduled accordingly. On sure in March, but this needed to come to you first to look over the overall project. If they were maintaining two spaces behind the property, which we physically saw on Google Earth, then they uh, um, they wouldn't need that uh, variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals. But I just wanted that to be clear to the board because it could be confusing. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks. That's an important clarification, Heather. And even though we won't be um, voting uh, on this proposal tonight, we can certainly gather comments that can be sent along to the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals for their consideration when they take this up on their agenda. So with that in mind, are there questions uh, from the commission members or from the staff for the applicant about this proposal and how it would operate. No, thank you. Okay. I'm good. Okay, thank you. I have a couple questions. One is um, the number of employees on the site at one time, can you confirm what that number is? Uh, yeah, let me look up the application. Um, I think it was only a few. Um, no, I, I'll have to get back to you on that. It, but it's only, I think, two or three. And the yeah. time I it was. The application says 10. 10, yeah. I wondered where they were all going to be. <laughs> I think that's probably a week's worth of. <laughs> <laughs> well. I will clarify that with the okay. That would be helpful. And then I think um, there was also a requirement for screening vis-a-vis um, -vis other residential uses nearby. Can you address that requirement as well? Yes, I'll show you the drawing again. Um, Okay. Right now, this this is the residential property, and there's another residential property here, but our alley has an existing uh, chain link fence here at the end of it, 
And this is just grass back in here. And since there's no vehicles, there's no parking. And actually, you know, there should be a fence right there on the neighboring property. So we didn't feel since there were going to be any vehicles, uh, if we get the waiver, that there needed to be any vehicle screening to uh, the residential property. So, Bill, I so, don't think that you actually shared that. If you want to try again. Oh, yeah. well, it was but this is a question then for staff. Uh, my reading of that screening requirement didn't pertain just to parking, but it was more to protect adjoining residential uses and office uses uh, from, a, I think, disturbance was the word. Um, mm -hmm. Can you clarify if that only then really pertains to parking, in which case um, it seems like it wouldn't be needed here? Or is it broader than that? Well, basically, we have a neighbor, a business, a group B, parking area, which is unscreened from this property. And then we have the RA parking area, which is unscreened from this property. So, I mean, this is this is the parking lot right here next door. And this is the parking lot here. And right there is the actual property, which just has the tree on it. And at the end here between the two buildings is the end of the alley. So, I don't see any any need for screening parking since there's no vehicles. I will just, I will just add in here from uh, the zoning ordinance perspective. The requirement is to provide uh, screening to protect those areas from unreasonable disturbance. Okay, I, we asked for a waiver then for the screening requirement. Okay. Okay. Um, sounds good. So I, um, this is not going to require any official action uh, from this body this evening, uh, but the conversation will be summarized and the comments, questions shared with the BZA uh, when they take this up. So um, I guess the question of the screening and clarification on the number of employees on site at one time. Uh, the maximum number would be helpful to have when this goes to the BZA. I will do. Okay. Um, and if if anyone on the commission would like to make any comments about any of those waivers tonight, you can do so. Um, I know we don't have a full board here, but um, you can always discuss anything about the waivers that are under your jurisdiction this evening. Any additional comments or questions um, or concerns that should be forwarded to the BZA on this? <clears throat> no, not, not for me. No, thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, this, uh, I guess just concludes our review of this this evening. There's no formal action because the formal action will be under the province of the Board of Zoning Appeals. So our comments will go forward to them and they will take this up at, um, if not their next meeting, soon thereafter. Uh, yes, can I have a copy of those when they go out? The comments? Well, I don't have any because nobody said anything. <laughs> so I have really had any comments. I was asking for them, but uh, everyone decided not to be, uh, not to say anything, so. You know, um, Heather, my, my comments, I guess we're kind of embedded in the questions. One clarification, is it 10 people maximum on site at one time or something less than that? And then I think kind of by extension, the question of screening, because it sounded as, as I read that requirement from the zoning ordinance, it wasn't particular only to parking, but um, disturbance 
construed more generally, uh, you know, impacting a neighboring office or residence. And so, you know, 10 people working on site at one time might be, might have one of those uh, less than favorable impacts on the adjoining residence or office. So I think those two kind of go hand in hand and clarification of one may help um, settle the other issue. So those would be my uh, two comments. Right, and if there's anyone here from the public, after public comments are heard, perhaps there might be more comments from the commission that you'd like to uh, move along to the Board of Zoning Appeals. So I think we're in a position now to do that, to see if anyone else on the call wishes to weigh in on this project um, as proposed. And so let's check out um, screen by screen here, whoever's on the call, if they wish to comment either way on the project they have an opportunity to do that now all right i will go down the line again uh i'm sorry uh, mr mcdonald i called you bernie it says benny i'm really <laughs> sorry about that so mr mcdonald do you have any comment for or against this project no comment all right thank you uh now call in user two uh whoever's on the phone if you wish to speak you can do so now um, is it, are you speaking about uh, Marvin and Charles? I'm speaking about 1011 to 1013 Park Street, if you have any comments about that proposal. Right, okay. Yes, I do have comments on that proposal, because I've been on Park Street for more than a decade, and I have seen how the traffic moves. I have seen how they speed on, on um, Park Street. How oh, animals were killed. A gentleman was also killed on Park Street, not too far from that building. And I'm very much concerned with restaurants being on Park Street because of the traffic. There will be traffic. No matter what he says, this big curb or whatever parking or whatever, there will be traffic on Park Street. And most of these people do not care where they park. They don't. And also, it is important you have children that be up and down those street, the street on Park Street. How are you going to think the, the, the children, they're always running, going into the stores. They will be coming into that restaurant. How will you protect those kids? And I am concerned with the residents. We have too much noise on Park Street. Those cars pass down Park Street. They don't care all hours in the night, all we hours in the morning. The very loud music. Now you put in a restaurant there. It will be worse. You have residentials around that building. And I am not far from that building. I can stay from my property and look straight down. And and what's about the garbage? That place is, is so filthy with garbage. How are you going to control that garbage? So I am saying there should be no restaurant at all on, on Park Street. Because I'm very much concerned about the children, the traffic, the noise, the garbage. And now we're talking about employees being in there. We do need some peace. In fact, we don't need no restaurant. The restaurant suggests what? Walking distance. Low that. Um, South Salina, um, North, North, North Salina. Downtown is just walking distance. Why do we need a restaurant right to that corner? We don't. Okay, thank you I'm very finished. much. Uh, if you could just state your name and address, ma'am, for the record. Oh, my, my, my name and address. My name is Marilyn, M A R I L Y N. The last name Charles, C H A R L E S. And it is 1105 Park Street. Thank you very much. Um, you're welcome. Before we totally, oh, did you get through everyone else on? Um, 
No, I am only on the second person. Oh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> we we have continue. the rest. The rest of the McDonald family here. So, uh, <laughs> Charlene McDonald. No comment. And Darlene McDonald Hackworth. No comment. All right, and the rest of the people a participant. Oh, Terry Luckett. I'm also. Thank you. All right, that is all we are. We are concluded with our. Okay. Department. Before we totally leave this one, the, the caller who just spoke uh, touched on parking. Um, made me think again about the parking for the two residential units. Where will those folks park who are part of? that building, uh, the two apartments that remain? At this point, uh, no provision has been made, but uh, if it becomes a condition or a necessity, um, I think that the owner could look at leasing two of the parking spaces out of the two adjacent uh, residential parking lots with those owners and okay. would be within the 500 feet uh, limitation. Uh, okay. Three from yeah. over on uh, Division Street? Yeah, that's, yeah, the, both parking lots enter from Division Street, yes. Okay. okay. Then regarding uh, garbage, um, presently the building is vacant. Um, uh, once you have tenants and you have a uh, landlord there daily, um, if they want to, uh, I'm sure that they would be willing to put out a uh, trash barrels and maintain uh, the front of the property. Right now, the building just is not being used. Um, regarding noise, um, I'm not sure that a takeout, basically the people are coming in, they're standing in front of a counter, they're getting their order and they're taking their order and they're leaving. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. not, a. I don't see noise as being a, an exceptional problem. Mm -hmm. And yeah. You know, it's the same with the rest of the businesses in that area. Um, you know, that, um, now, regarding uh, the traffic, uh, it is Park Street is a main thoroughfare, and I don't think that this the use of any of the properties, you know, really deals with the issue of speeding traffic. I think that's that's something that um, really has to be enforcement police enforcement uh, situation. Uh, what hasn't been mentioned so far was the, the issue of why another restaurant? Well, the menu that they're proposing is basically Ethiopian. Uh, it's two within the neighborhood of that is not being served. Uh, and there uh -huh. are a large number of residents who would be interested in that? So that's the the, uh -huh. the function, and and being that you're going to have a lot of uh, pedestrian traffic, because uh, probably most of the patrons won't be able to own cars or will live within several blocks and will walk to the property. Um, I guess those are the end of my comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, then I think we are in a position to conclude our discussion on this item. We are not acting on it. Um, it will move to the Board of Zoning Appeals under their jurisdiction, and we will move to our next public hearing for this evening. Thank you. The last public hearing this evening is 2064. This is a companion uh, case to variance B2101 that was recently approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, this particular application is for a resubdivision to combine three properties into one new lot at 249, 255, and 261 Baker Avenue. Benny McDonald's and the Greater Syracuse Property Development Corporation are the owners and applicants. And um, they all three properties lie within a residential class AA zoning district. So
So the Board of Zoning Appeals had to review this as it is a non-conforming three family on one of the properties, and they are expanding that by way of lot size and building a three car garage. So that is not permitted. Uh, so they had to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals to um, see if the expansion of the non-conforming use was something that was to be approved and they did that on Thursday. Okay, thank you, Heather. Is someone here speaking tonight, Terry, on the um, uh, resubdivision proposal? That's, I'm Terry Luckett. I'm with the Greater Syracuse Land Bank at 431 East Fayette Street. Here, as Heather said, with the property owner Benny McDonald and his two sisters, Charlene and Darlene, and they three live in each of the three apartments at uh, 249 Baker Ave. Benny also owns the vacant lot at the corner of Baker and Borden, that's 261. So he owns the house and he owns the lot on the corner. And uh, the land bank owns 255 Baker, where it sits between those vacant lots. And the land bank had demolished a uh, vacant house there in 2019. Benny and his sisters want to construct a three car garage at the lot currently owned by the land bank. That lot measures 43 by 126. It doesn't meet the requirements of the affordable housing developers, home headquarters, or housing visions. They want lots that are 50 feet or more wide for new construction. So that is not really a viable candidate for new construction. As Heather said, in order for uh, Benny and his sisters to build that three-car garage, the lot has to be subdivided because private garages aren't allowed in um, residential class A as a primary use. We don't think the approval of the variance combining the, not the variance, the approval of the resubdivision of combining the um, three lots will change the essential character of the neighborhood. There's four other lots that are quite large right in that area. 252 Baker is 0.2 acres. 238 Baker is 0.2 acres. 216 Baker is 0.27 acres. And 120 Woodland and Baker is 0.3 acres. The proposed lot here is 0.33 acres. When the garage is constructed, it's going to minimize the appearance of the gap that exists in the street now. Um, so it will look better. It will fill up the space. And the McDonald's will maintain the lot and they'll pay taxes. So we think this is um, a good solution for the neighborhood. Okay, thank you, Terry. Are there questions from the commission? Uh, for Terry concerning this subdivision proposal. Questions or clarifications? Not for me. Just that point of information, you were nice enough to mention the other properties that are essentially a quarter of an acre. Um, so this Adding these properties together, this subdivision won't alter what's already existing in the footprint of the neighborhood. Correct. All right. Our colleague who's normally here to ask that question isn't here. So Rebecca knows. <laughs> I prepared myself this time. <laughs> on the record. Uh, thank you. Okay. And if there are no further questions from the commission members, um, it'd be our opportunity now to ask members of the public to comment for or against. Uh, as I look at my screen, I see commission members, staff members, and applicants <laughs> uh, on the screen. But Heather, do you want to make, why don't you confirm you, sir, you're seeing the same thing on the screen or ask if anyone would like to speak? That's correct. I only see uh, the applicants and owners, my lawyer, my staff, and commission members. So there's nobody here <laughs> to speak in favor or against that isn't involved with the project or the commission. 
Okay. Had they been here, they would have been given the opportunity to speak, but it's a small <laughs> group tonight. Uh, so be it. Uh, so with questions answered and uh, any clarifications addressed, uh, I think we are in a position to close the public hearing on this application this evening. And we will do that. And then we will see if there is a motion forthcoming from one of the commission members for action on this resubdivision proposal. I move approval with a negative declaration. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Is there discussion on the motion before us? Hearing none, uh, those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Uh, the motion is approved. Um, thank you, Terry. And, um, the McDonald family for being here this evening. Appreciate it. Your application has been approved. Great, thanks. You're welcome to stay. Uh, we have some other <laughs> business to take care of, um, and you can continue I, to join I have, us. I have. I have I, can I have a, a, a second? Oh, um, certainly. Thank, thank you all. We appreciate your your um, approval. Thank you. The last name, the last name, Lamadola. Uh, that name sounds so familiar because when I served at 174th Spider Wing. I work with the Colonel Lamadola. Is there any relation? Well, in fact, yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Colonel is my husband, Joe. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much and have a good okay. night. Okay. Small, bye -bye. small world. <laughs> so, uh, that does complete our public hearings for this evening, but we have a couple of other several other items under new business, uh, two, three mile limit cases and two antenna site review cases. Can you get us started on the first of the two um, site review applications for the antenna? Yes, certainly. Uh, the first new business item is SR2101. This is site plan review for an antenna. And this is to install a single antenna rooftop antenna array at 2329 James Street. This is ARC WGSYRNY001, LLC is the owner. And Centerline Communications is the applicant. And it lies within a business class a zoning district. Um, right, so it's just a rooftop antenna array with a single antenna and two remote radio units and its accessory equipment on the property. Um, it doesn't require, it complies with uh, all the regulations within the zoning ordinance. However, it's within 100 feet of a residential zoning district, which is why it requires this site plan review. And I believe it's on the roof. Yeah, it's on the roof. It is. It is, it is according to the photo we had or the simulation. And are there any um, uh, issues with this proposal these would be the overlay district. The James Street overlay district. Um, hold on one second. Let me just, just let me just check with that. Hold on just one second. You could just be patient for one more minute. We're a patient group. <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry about that. Jeff is uh, checking. Both of these are in the James Street overlay, and unfortunately, we did not put that down. So thank you so much for calling that to our attention. We are checking with that right now. And um, I, I don't know that it does conflict with it, but that was the one thing that came to mind. This one did include a simulation. Yes. Uh, it's just a single antenna. It's hard to tell, even from the simulation, uh, and to me at least, um, what kind of a visual impact it might have on neighboring residential area. I, I couldn't get a clear sense of that, but I also know we don't have a lot of latitude <laughs> um, on these site review cases for um, the antenna. And I did see this statement in there that the engineering report came back favorable that the site can support the additional weight. So that's not an issue. Um, the only remaining thing that seemed to be in my mind is there was potentially something uh, right. where it might conflict with the overlay district. Yeah, that it was 32 feet high from the ground. Okay. And so what's the roof of the what's the roof of the building for the it's, Walgreens there? Yeah, Walgreens. Uh, I don't know what it, it looks like it has a parapet. Mm -hmm. Um but it's a one story building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold on one second. So 30, 33 feet, you said Rebecca? 32. <laughs> 32, okay. So, so it seems like the building's got to be somewhere between 15 and 20 feet tall, um, which would reduce. Especially with, the, especially with the parapet, yes. Yeah, okay. So that might be uh, helping to um, camouflage, if you will, or hide the antenna from the residential area a bit. At least it wouldn't be towering above the roof. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm. We're prohibited uses. Oh, crap. No, if, if, Bear with me just one minute. I'm really sorry about that. I'm just trying to see if they are prohibited or not. Um, uh, so yeah, hang on one second. Okay, and depending on when the overlay district was developed, it may have preceded the prominence of these yeah. kinds of antenna, and it might not even have been addressed. That's correct, yep. Steve, are you looking at um, page 104? Um, no, not at the moment. Is that, does that have the... Uh... It, sh it shows the um, antenna. And it's certainly, it looks small and it looks like it's... Um, just a little bit taller than the parapet at the where the building is highest. Rebecca, are you looking at the illustration in the packet? Not the simulation, but the illustration that shows the elevation? Uh, what's the number of the page? So I'm actually, I'm on the tablet and I'm looking at the illustration, which has a number C dash three no i'm that's not what i'm looking okay at. okay so you said 104. this is a photo oh wait a minute it this it is a photo simulation that i'm looking at okay yeah, okay a side-by-side -side simulation right okay And it's quite dark and it looks like it's 
as a line of snow on the ground. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. doesn't seem overly obtrusive it's I'm assuming that simulation is kind of from ground level but it's hard to know exactly um, the only thing I can fine for her prohibition is off-premise advertising. Uh, um, that's the okay. only, and it's kind of buried in here, but I did find that. There's um, animated signs and roof signs will be prohibited. So that seems to be the only thing I can find. Antennas do not seem to be addressed in this part of the ordinance. So, yeah. but what you can do is you make your decision based upon the information that you have. If there is any conflict that I will confirm with the law department, then um, we'll come back to the commission next time and, and state that. But I think Catherine would be able to move forward because based on what I'm seeing right now, there's no conflict. Okay, good. But I always uh, get a little bit nervous when I haven't previously, um, you know, vetted this through and made sure. And I really apologize for this. Um, uh, but go ahead, Catherine. Yes, I think what you're proposing is completely fine. Uh, one thing that I will add is um, a blanket prohibition of antenna in, in an area would probably violate the FCC rules. So I, I'm not worried about that. But if there's anything regarding placement and or screening or something that's that we uh, we can address that. And I would just recommend any approval be conditional upon us reviewing that. Okay. That sounds like a good approach. Okay, well, it's certainly not signage, that's for sure. Excuse me, uh, excuse me for interrupting, but just before the, the commission makes a decision, I have to point out that I overlooked an aspect of the uh, zoning ordinance. Uh, Part C, Section 1, Article 7 states that the antenna and all supporting structures must be at least 30 feet above grade. I misinterpreted. I saw the uh, antenna itself at 30 feet, but there is supporting structure that's less than 30 feet above grade. And I don't know if it's the planning commission, I think you have the authority to waive that, but I'm trying to determine that right now. Where is the what you're talking about. Uh, the, for example, the, the pole that's holding the antenna up. Yeah. As, as well as the, the base that holding it, those are supporting structures. And if the bottom of the antenna is at 30 feet, then the supporting structures are less than 30 feet. And part C, section one, article seven, paragraph two, um, state that, I'm sorry, it might be paragraph one, um, antennas and related supporting structures and frameworks on buildings in all zoning districts shall be placed at least 30 feet above grade. Um, I am looking to see if that can be waived and I apologize. This is my oversight. but I do not want to let you make a decision without okay. um, the right information. So potentially it sounds like it might be too low and it might have to be uh, the, the stuff that it sits on might have to be elevated. Um, I would argue bit. that if, if this is not waivable, then the building is not suitable. Um, I do have 
I do have the section open for for waivers for uh, requirements um, for towers and antenna, not including satellite dishes. Uh, waivers of standards for any tower and antenna other than satellite dishes uh, must be based on the finding that there is no existing structure tower or alternative technology available which can accommodate the coverage um, and need of the applicant to apply for the waiver. Um, so that that is on page 15 of the PDF of part C. That's um uh, gotta go back to the top to see what yes, it's there. part C, section one, article seven, paragraph F. Thank you. <laughs> two or P F two. Yeah, F two. Um it it sounds like based on a reading of that, just that you might need more information as to whether there is an alternative in the area before proceeding. At least that's what I would recommend. Um because of that the language about um an alternative technology or space. Unless uh Jeffrey Heather, can we confirm that information tonight or I am unable to confirm that tonight. I will have to get okay. back with the applicant to have them submit uh, documentation that there is not uh, an alternative site or technology. So, Catherine, in this case, would you recommend us just holding this pending receipt of additional information? Yes. Or, okay. Rebecca Walter, you're that's okay with that. Okay, we'll yes. we'll await the additional information from the applicant, and we could take this up at our next our next meeting. So while we're in the antenna department, uh, we have another proposal down the block of a bit in Eastwood and do any of the issues that um, came to light in the first antenna application uh, hold for the second antenna application? Well, this one's 42 feet. Okay, so that issue sounds like it's disappears in the second and, one. And this is a modification to existing. And I remember when we approved this. Right, so this one sounds like the overlay considerations already been dealt with. Okay, so let me uh, introduce this. This is uh, SR 1206M2 modification to a site plan review for an antenna to install three additional wireless antennas at 2600 to 2622 Gene Street. Um, they would like to upgrade the existing rooftop antenna array from six to nine. Um, it will consist of nine wireless antennas with a center line height of 44 feet and six remote radio units attached to three equipment racks. And then with three antennas and two remote radio units per rack. Um, it is within 100 feet of a residential class A1 zoning district, but as Rebecca stated previously, this uh, is a modification. The first installation was in 1997. Then again, uh, replacement and accessory equip equipment in 2012. And the most recent was in 2017 uh, for another modification. So, um, this one, something that is already there. Okay. So any questions on this or any concerns about this? It, it looks like this is an occur, occur. It looks like they're going to remove um, the, the one where it's three. And I'm trying to figure out if they're where they're putting 
existing, 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 approximate location. Okay. So they're putting it closer to the installation that um, uh, is furthest from John Street. And, and they they're taking the one that was down that was nearest to James Street. So. Okay. Any other questions or concerns or additional information needed? If not, then it sounds like we're clear to take action on this site plan review. I'm I'm sorry, I missed in, in the other <laughs> in the other plans. It looks like they're they're taking it down, but putting the new one there in, and then there will be three. So I think there's a net increase of three, right? Right. 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 But there'll be three places where, on the roof where they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, just, oh. That's page one. Yes, that's correct. Sheet A1B. Yes, A1B. There was the three um, antenna contraptions. Okay. If there's no information missing or additional questions, there are a motion on this one. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I move with a negative declaration and regret. <laughs> you can hold it and ask for more information and clarification, Rebecca. Oh, well, let me ask my lawyer. <laughs> well, yeah, you you can always, yes. You feel you need more information, especially from the applicant, you can hold it open. No, I not. I, I don't think there's anything we can do about it, frankly. Well, we could ask about, since there's a net increase, we could ask for a better illustration of the location of the three newest antenna because that for me that's not clear from the illustration then let then let's ask for that if that would be helpful it shouldn't be a difficult thing for the applicant to generate that and have it back to us in time i'm thinking for the next meeting and that might provide a better comfort level uh, to know exactly what we're dealing with and its impact on the residential area before we take action. Well, did you see A3, which is the next one? Um, <clears throat> let's see. That gives more of an idea, but it is it is not a photo simulation. Yeah. Drawing. And uh, it seems to me in terms of gauging impact on the nearby residential area, a simulation is more helpful. Yes. Uh, to, to gauge the impact. So we can we can ask for that. Okay. Please do. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have consensus. Um, Heather and Jeff, uh, that we'd like the applicant to provide a, a simulation of what the end result would look like on the building. All right, we will do okay. that. All right, so we'll hold both of those, but we still have a couple more items here. Uh, three mile limit cases, I believe. Uh, the next new business item is a three mile limit subdivision in the town of Clay. This is 3F0819 M1. And this is Chuck Hafner's Garden Center subdivision to realign three properties into three new lots at 7265 Buckley Road and 5061 West Half Road and an additional tax parcel at 107 1206. Charles Hafner is the owner and applicant. Okay, and because this is on his new business, it means uh, that it has gone through the departmental review and um, there are no issues, correct? Correct. Okay. Any questions, Walter, Rebecca? No. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there a motion? I'll make up for last time. Move approval with a negative declaration. Thank Second. you. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, it's approved. And we have one more three mile limit case this evening. Yes, this is 3S2101. This is a three mile limit subdivision review in the town of DeWitt. This is for the Shopping Town Mall. Chili's resubdivision, and this is to divide one parcel into two new lots at 3649 and 3691 Erie Boulevard East. Onondaga County is the owner, and the applicant is J. Ryan McMahon II. Okay, and was, as with the case before this. Are we going to get to see all the Shopping Town stuff? I mean, not now, but when it happens? Because it's within three miles. Not any proposal, but if there's another resubdivision, no. then mm -hmm. we would. So, other questions? All set. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there a motion? Move approval with a negative declaration. Second, is there a discussion? Can you hear me? Now I can. Were you trying to speak earlier? Sorry. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Can't hear her. Um, I didn't hear Rebecca, but maybe she's going to vote nay. Um, those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Rebecca, were you perhaps an I vote for that? The audio doesn't seem to be working properly. I don't think she can hear us because she's not responding. <laughs> we put something in the chat. Uh, the chat? Will she look in the chat? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't see the chat on mine now. Um, Walter waved to her or something. Right. Um, I'll see. If I'll try a chat too. I don't see where the chat is. Yeah, she can't hear us. Can't hear us. Um, can we email or text? Uh, yeah, sure. 
I can. But of course, you might be focused on the screen and not looking for <laughs> text message, but we'll try what options we have. Oh, okay. Um, oh, Catherine, thank you for putting that. Now I see the thank you. chat. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She knows how to. Um, you know what we could do, Walter? You yeah. have a piece of paper and a marker. Hold it up and say, Rebecca, how do you vote? Okay. Are we back? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. <laughs> she can't hear us. <laughs> All right, try that again. Boy, WebEx has been challenging tonight. I know. All right, just trying to make this legible. Let's see if we can make this work. Uh, is it too light? How do you vote? <laughs> okay, <yeah. laughs> Thumbs up or thumbs down, Tyler? <laughs> yeah. <All right>. Okay. <laughs> <Yay. laughs> oh, good job. <laughs> okay, this is fun. Okay, tonight. so. <laughs> The right. uh, gold reliable pen and paper prevails. <laughs> uh, so the motion is approved. The last um, three mile limit, 3S-21-01. Uh, our next item is the authorizations for the hearings on February the 23rd. We have four new ones. We have two held open from this evening. Um, any additional hearings requiring authorization, Heather? Um, I think we only have one holdover of a hearing, but you're holding the two business items. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yes. So we'll add 1011 to 1013 Park Street to the hearing list. So you'll have five total hearings. Okay. Well, in the interests of minimizing everyone's frustration, I will move the um, authorizations for the 23rd. Roger, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes. But apparently you can't hear us. Yeah, you can't hear us. Right, yeah. Um, and just to, just to um, uh, let you guys know, it is the 22nd. Not the 23rd. We had it wrong. Oops. Okay. No, that our, our original uh, agenda that went out, uh, we mistake, mistakenly thought it was a holiday. So that's why we moved it to Tuesday, but it is not. So we'll see you on the 22nd. Oh, mon uh, Monday the 22nd. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were thinking President's Day that week. Right. Okay. So I have moved authorization for those hearings for our next meeting, which will be Monday, the 22nd of February. Is there a second? Second. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Rebecca can't hear us. Can you put up your piece of paper again and ask how you <laughs> vote on the authorizations? Uh. I'm author <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay, so that is set. Uh, before we go to adjournment, Catherine, um, governor's executive order still in place? Yes, it's been extended through February 26th. Okay, okay. So is there anything we can do in terms of WebEx? Um, it was kind of shaky tonight, and I don't know if the issue with Rebecca's audio portion is a WebEx issue or her own computer issue or what, but um, it seems a little shaky. Reach out to IT, but I, I'm not sure. I think we're stuck with this platform, but maybe they have some advice. Okay. Unless Heather and Jeff have any other ideas. <laughs> It's all over my head. It's just, and we didn't have a big group signing on. I thought sometimes if you have a large contingent signed in, that might complicate things, but that really wasn't the case this evening. 
we didn't have a lot of people. So, um, okay, well, and it'd be that there's nothing they can do about it either. We'll just have to have a lot of paper and pencil handy and, um, and we should maybe say that, uh, as an alert to one another before the meeting, be prepared if the audio breaks down, we might be putting little post-it notes up in front of the screen to try to expedite things. So we'll just, um, soldier on, I guess. Uh, so with that and knowing that Rebecca probably can't hear any of this, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And maybe you could ask how she wants to vote on adjournment. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Well, I, I guess we science. Science. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> science. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for hanging in there. This was a little more difficult than usual, uh, but we did it. Uh, we did it, and uh, we'll be back on uh, the twenty second. Thank yes. you all. Be safe. Stay warm. And uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. <laughs>